I am in conversation with one of India's top orthopedic surgeons and the chairman of Parvati Hospitals, Dr. Muthu Kumar, SMK. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. How are you? Thank you. How are you? Very good. Very good. Let's, let's get right into this. I always wanted to know, when celebrities come to you for a treatment, do they actually pay you or do they settle it with a selfie? Do you want me to answer here? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> You charge Get them? them paid. All right. So That's perfect. This is probably <laughs> Doctor, what has changed about the Indian healthcare in the past few years in your experience? And what do you think will continue to shape it in the next five years or so, according to you? Yeah, Bhavani, actually, looking at the healthcare industry in India, technology has started coming into play as a lot in the country. Right. With a, with a kind of uh, tech savvy people in the country and the surgeons also. So actually look at Parvati, we have brought in an in artificial intelligence into the OR. Wow. Uh, an operating room which has have a three dimensional view of the entire every part of your bone you are operating. So that's wow. called as an artificial intelligence, it's called, we call it as IOR, intelligent OR. Wow. It's a wow. looping um, 14 crore theater. Wow. <laughs> One operating room is, that, is, that. is... Is that something that you have here at Parvati? Yeah, we have it. The last six years we are operating on that. Wow. Especially for a, a surgery, if you have to do by a millimeter precision, yeah. I think this is the OR. Wow. So this is the kind of technology which is coming into play into the country. Because the it's, it's, it's about quality care now. Yes. And, and, and you know, that's a, that's a very good point. So now, um, I was reading an HBR article some time back, and uh, the author was talking about the patient's experience there, you know. Um, right from the time they register and they, they come to the, uh, the hospital and the, the journey they go through and by the time they get discharged and billing, the patient experience is something which is very critical. Uh, how do you view it? How important it is? Is that something which is at the core of what you do at Parvati as well? Yeah, I, I would, uh, yeah, you're right on the point. We would call it as a patient delight. Patient delight. No yeah. more we aim at the, the, uh, the patient experience. satisfaction. Yeah, yeah. That. We want to create, of course, it is a long journey. Still, right. I would say we keep doing, improving, all right. that. We are also finding it very useful to have a standardization with the mm -hmm. help of accreditations. Yeah. See, for example, an NABH is a national level yeah. accreditation. Yeah. Yeah. When we have gone through and we got accredited. Yeah. Yeah. So when we get it's a it's a third party. Um, yeah, it's a third party. Auditing, Quality auditing, Council right. of yeah. India yeah. has given an accreditation. Wow. And when you go through the process, right. actually all these are taken care of. Patient right. factors, patient safety factors. Yeah. All that is all covered right. and the entire team Parvati is trained with that. Wow, not bad. <laughs> so, I, I, I was wondering that, you know, you know so, so when, we, when we started doing this and I was, uh, you know, researching a bit about you, I, I read up that uh, you have a 0.0002% mortality rate. That's like negligible. How have you managed to achieve that? I mean, this is, this is something that blew me away. I mean, running, um, running such an uh, intense, large um, uh, you know, organization where you see hundreds and thousands of patients in a year, and uh, <coughs> working on those numbers, achieving those numbers is like simply phenomenal. I mean, congratulations to you and the entire team at uh, Thank Parvati you, thank you very much. Yeah. See, we had been striving hard to get this done. It's not without problems. Yeah. We did encounter a lot of uh, problems. The mortality was not that better before. Yeah. We started setting protocols. Everything was, uh, we anal see, we went through these basic yeah. standards. Yeah. Everything was analytical. Yeah. So it's critical about every performance. Right. It may be a top surgeon in my mm. own group, mm. or it could be a person who drives an ambulance. Everything mm. is critically analyzed. Yeah. And then we have got set standard protocols for getting into this. Right. I would uh, probably say uh, we are very happy that we have achieved uh, infection rate which is as low as 0.06 percent. Wow. See one of the complications which is bad to expect after yeah. the knee, uh, yeah. an orthoplastic yeah. surgery, knee replacement surgery, yeah. is infection. 
Uh, and we worked on that again and again and again. Of course, I told you another yeah. theatre. It's, it's, it's a process. You, you, it's a process. You, yeah, and it's we have set into the process and we are able to achieve that. Amazing. I mean, that's, that's Hopefully phenomenal. Hopefully, we keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was at Parvati yesterday. Okay. I was taking a tour of your facility and I noticed there's a ward called SV Ward. Yeah. <laughs> what is that about, sir? See, uh, I had one of my patients who is called as Mr. Singara Valen. Mm -hmm. uh, he is my regular patient. He's an young chap. He had some connective tissue disorder, which yeah. means uh, a disorder where he gets joint pains. Mm. And he went in for a full-fledged problem, which is a full-fledged connective tissue, which started involving many of his organs. Mm. And I had to refer him to many other specialty guys, other mm. than orthopedic surgeons. Mm. And gradually he became very bad. For, the la for five, six years I've been treating him gradually. We couldn't actually clinch a right diagnosis. Even today it's a mystery for most of us. And uh, we knew that we couldn't save him. And the last episode of his admission, he was with me. And it was a very touching scene because he had such a belief with me and I went and told him, Singara Villain, really I can't help you because everyone has seen you. The best guys all related to nephrology. Everyone has said they are unable to clinch what it is. And he's sinking. I mm. told him, I don't know how far I would be able to save you. He said, said one that to him? word, yeah. yeah. He said one word. Doctor, whatever has happened, I know that you have done the best for me and I'm very happy to die in your hands. That's a word wow. he said. So, uh, so you dedicated always, that word. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the, the patient-doctor relationship is such a divine thing. Yeah. He proved to be probably one of the best patients for me. Yeah. Why should not I start a word in the memory of my best patient? I know that you started as a general physician. Yeah. And now, today, you are India's top orthopedic surgeon and, and probably nobody has done more replacements than you have. How was this transformation and why was this transformation? Were you not making enough money as a physician? <laughs> Actually, it's a very interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, as a physician, I used to see 200 patients a day. Yeah. So I was making enough money for that time, you know. I was very happy. Yeah. Uh, so the complacence made me feel a good doctor. Yeah. And once one of my friends had finished the general surgery mm. and I had to go and help him out in the theatre yeah. just to see what he is doing there. Yeah. And I could see in the OR, uh, technician was asking for a suture material called his Vicryl. And that time, that part of my career, I never knew what a Vicryl is, a doctor. I have finished my MBBS yeah. and I see a technician knows better than me. Yeah. So that broke my complacence. Yeah. Then I thought I have to become a surgeon. Oh, I thought you were going to say that I was successful, I was making money and I got complacent and then I got married. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Then my wife is one of the... The yeah. main reason that I became very complacent, happy, life, <laughs> happy married life. <laughs> yeah. SMK, 33 long years, uh, countless surgeries, but is there any one or two um, that you are secretly very proud about? Yeah, as you said, many of them, see, for yeah. an orthopedic surgeon, nothing is the same again. again. Yeah. So, but uh, I would like to remember or highlight here one of the surgeries where uh, the patient is a 22-year girl, yeah. young girl. She doesn't have any support. I realized that later. Mm. She had not been walking since six years. She had rheumatoid arthritis. Every joint was involved. And she had both the hips, both the knees, elbows, shoulder, everything. And she's crippled, crippled in the bed. And the, the knee is bending. And, uh, Almost literally the knee, the leg was touching the thigh like this. Oh my God. Like that. Oh. She didn't move six years, lived in the bed six years. Hmm. So we pulled up all the resources and we wanted to help her and then we did a very, because it's complex in the sense the bones were very soft, 
you can't really do just like that the regular implants we have to add on certain additional implants into that then as you are bringing the knee straight mm. there's a chance for the vascular injury so we had a back of the vascular mm. it's a complex uh, yeah everyone was around with us yeah. and we finally both the knees were made straight and she's right now walking is she walking she's walking wow i mean <laughs> This is this is this is why we say that you know uh, doctors are the closest to God that you can get. I mean, thank you so much for your amazing work, and um, this is uh, this is truly inspirational, you know. And 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 one of the reasons I'm doing this is that you know I've I've had an accident as a child, and mm. uh, <clears throat> yeah, and um, right now uh, all I'm doing is you know making the right friends. <laughs> you know what I mean there? Yeah. <laughs> SMK, I've noticed that um, we have. Uh, Futuristic healthcare written outside your hospital. What does that really mean to you? Yeah, that's that's the tagline of Parvati. Yeah. Uh, see, does it mean anything, or it's just a jingle? I told you we shouldn't yeah. become complacent with things. Yeah. So uh, I realized being futuristic is that in the DNA for us. Yeah. So we wanted to bring in everything which is the high tech. Yeah. To make it affordable for our Indian public. Yeah. And also, then we realize we don't have borders. Yeah. We want to reach out everywhere. Yeah. So we want to be at par internationally. Yeah. And also keep going into research and bring in newer technologies. Wow. So it's going to be high tech. We started proving that by doing that IOR. Yeah. We also were the ones uh, probably uh, we did the first uh, navigated hip replacement. The, the first, first navigated in, hip in replacement. The Asia Pacific. Wow! Imagine there are many so, other so guys not, like Japan, not the Japs, Australia, not the Aussies, Aussies, not Singaporeans, not Chinese. You did it first. Yes. Wow. That's again. We are we are going to talk about millimeters again. Yeah. When it comes to orthopedics and futuristic healthcare. Yeah. Uh, that again is one facility which we want to give a millimeter precision in the hip. So the limb length will be perfect when we do with a. Navigated right. hip so, so, so for, for, for laymen like me, it means when you replace somebody's hip, they're going to be fine again. Yeah, back to All normal. Right. In, in fact, they can go back to do even gymnastics. Yeah. <laughs> get their thigh onto the face. Perfect. I have heard that surgeons have a very steady hand. Let's 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 you let ask me, my patients. That let me challenge you. All of them are doing well. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to challenge. I'm going to challenge you to to check the balance of your hands right now. Yeah. Let's let's let, let me show you something coming. Okay. All right. So, uh, so Dr. Muthumar, this is historical for me, right? And you should play a beer pong game with you, except for the difference. Uh, that you know, this drink is not alcoholic, but and, and for the records on the camera, if you can zoom in, this is uh, bitter gold. Neem and garlic mixed together. Oh. The game goes. That's that, medicinal. Actually. Yeah, that's medicinal. The game goes that we both get three chances to beat each other's glass. Okay. The one who does three first wins. And if I hit on your glass, you have got to drink that one. All right. Okay. So let's. This is. There you go. Thank you. All right. Can I go first? All right. This is. Okay. Should I? Yeah. Let's do this.
Misses. I win. But take another one. Scaling up your business, your hospital, I, I wish you all the luck and to all the staff of RIT. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here with us.